Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire. And in this video, I'm gonna be setting up a Ubiquiti Unify Dream Machine Pro. Um, and I'm gonna also be adding to that Dream Machine Pro a 48 port PoE switch and seven wireless access points. And I've got two different models of those as well, which I'm gonna go through in a moment. Before I go any further, I just wanna say thank you very much for watching. Please do subscribe to the channel. And if you wanna check out who we are and what we do, then uh, you can find us on our Instagram. Okay, so let's get into the devices that I'm setting up here. So I will share my screen with you now. Okay, so the first device I'm gonna be using today is the Unify Dream Machine Pro. Um, it's a basically a router, but it's also a console that hosts uh, Unify applications such as Network Protect, Access, and a few others as well. Um, it's got eight ports, uh, eight gigabit ports, and it's got two SFP ports that are 10 gig, one for the LAN and one for the WAN. And it's also got a one gig uh, WAN port as well, which we're gonna be using. It's a very nice little device. You can add a hard drive uh, to it as well if you want to use the unified cameras. Okay, so that's the first device. The second device we're gonna be using is the um, standard 48 port uh, PoE switch, which is the USW 48 PoE. Um, this is uh, got 32 gigs of PoE plus, and it's got 16 gigabit ports and four one gig SFP ports. And you can see it's got quite a bit of juice. It's 195 watts of total PoE power available. So um, it's ideal. The other great thing about this switch is although it's quite uh, it's got quite a lot of PoE and a lot of ports. It's fanless and it's silent, so you don't have that annoying whirring noise that you get with some PoE switches. Okay, now onto the Wi-Fi. Okay, so for the Wi-Fi, we're using two access points. One of them is the U6 Plus, um, which is a two times two MIMO Wi-Fi six access point. I really like this device. It uses very little PoE. It's only nine watts of PoE used for this one, so um, it's not really going to be touching much of the power on that. Uh, 48 port switch right so the next one so the other access point we've got is the u6 mesh the u6 mesh is a four times four mi mo um, access point and that's wi-fi 6 as well it um, is able to be in use indoors or outdoors in this case we're going to be using it outdoors and it's got a slightly higher PoE budget. If I go down here to the technical specs, you can see that it's 11.4 watts. So it uses slightly more, but still it's not really gonna to touch the um, PoE capability of that 48 port switch. Okay, so now we've done that, let's get on to the setup. Um, I'm gonna be using uh, my Mac and I uh, just need a hardwired cable into the Dream Machine, which I'm gonna do now. Before we do that, let me just quickly show you all the kits set up on my desk so you can see what we've got. And everything's just patched in nicely from one to the other. Okay, so now we get into the setup. So just to briefly explain what I've done there, I've plugged in my Mac into uh, one of the LAN ports on the Unify, and then I've opened the browser and I've just typed in the IP address 192.168.1.1. And although we haven't got an internet connection yet, that just gets us into the console, so we're ready to set it up. Okay, so pretty simple here. We just click on the set up the UDM Pro. Now the first thing it's gonna do is it's gonna look for an internet connection. And I haven't actually connected the internet yet. I've got a cable here, which is coming from my uh, LAN, so from my local area network. And I'm just gonna plug that straight into the internet port. Now one thing to say, is you wouldn't normally set it up like this, I would not normally set it up like this. I would normally be taking it straight off a modem. However, because I'm just setting this up for a client tomorrow, I don't need to do this as a permanent setup. I just need to get it all up and running and then I can put it in properly tomorrow. Because I'm using a dot 200 subnet on my local area network, it means that I can use, I can just plug this straight back, straight in, it'll get a DHCP IP address and it will work straight away because by default, as you can see from the Unified Dream Machine, it uses a dot one subnet. So it's not gonna conflict with my dot 200. If you try plugging this straight into a router in this kind of double NAT setup here, then, and it's got the same subnet, a dot one subnet, then it won't work. It will basically give you an error saying that it can't get an IP address. So just bear that in mind. But the best way to set this up is to connect it directly to a modem or to your fiber connection or however you're gonna do it. If you're not using DHCP, then at this point, it won't connect the internet straight away. So if you're using PPPoE or you're using a static IP address, 
then you'll have to go to advanced internet settings and put those details in there. If you're not sure what you need for PPPoE, then you can just watch our quick video that I've done uh, previously on that. Um, and also if you're in the UK and you'll be using BT, then I've also got a video on that, just put it up there as well. Um, if you're using a static IP address, you will probably be aware of that and you just need all the, the details from your ISP. If you are using DHCP, as I am here, then you'll get an internet connected straight away. So we're straight into it. Right, so next. Now, first thing it's gonna do is ask you to give it a console name. Now the console name is what shows as the name of the Dream Machine. So when you see all your devices listed, that's what the console will be called. For myself, I always give it a unique name that's unique to the client because I need to know which one's which. So if I'm looking at my account, I've got loads of them, I need to know which one's which. So I can't just use it as UDM Pro, I have to put some kind of details into that. But you can really put what you want here, it doesn't really matter. I'm just gonna put in, for now, we'll just put in YouTube. Oh, YouTube with a U. Okay, so we'll agree to that. And then we go next. Right, so at this point, you are basically associating this device to your Unify account. If you haven't got one, then just create one because it makes a lot of sense. It means you can use the app. It means you can access all this remotely really easily. Um, so just get the account set up. It's really simple, it takes a few minutes and then you'll be able to just use all the features that you can get from it. So I'm just gonna type in my credentials here, which I'm obviously gonna hide from you. The other thing is that we have two step verification set up on our account. So I will have to put in some further details that you might not have to. You can set up two-step verification on your account using, uh, on, your, on your Unify account. Um, I will show you how to do that. It's quite handy because you can get the Unify verification on your iPhone or on your uh, Apple Watch. Okay, we're not restoring from a backup, so we're gonna continue with that backup. Next thing we're going to do is uh, set the update schedule. So 3, 3 a.m. is a really good time because no one's going to be doing much on the network there. But obviously, if you're, for example, putting this in for a nightclub, then you probably don't want it updating at 3 a.m. So just uh, bear that in mind. Let's get to that one. Some people, just to mention on the update, some people don't like the updates to be automatic and you can turn that off if you want. Sometimes there's a little bit of teething problems with updates, although recently they've been pretty good, but in the past there have occasionally been issues with updates. So that's the only reason why you might not put that on. You can choose to send the diagnostic performance if you want. I'll just turn it on, why not? I'll go next. Now this basically is testing my internet speed. And the reason it's testing my internet speed is because it's like a measure of how well your internet is performing. Now we've got pretty fast connection here, it's supposed to be 900 up, 900 down. However, the client's gonna have a different internet speed tomorrow. So I'm gonna to have to redo this tomorrow when the client's out. Otherwise, it's gonna immediately think that the internet is not as good as it should be, and it's gonna start reporting that. Now, it's not gonna give you that information unless you set up the periodic speed test, and I will show you how to do that shortly. Right, so that's what we've got. If you think it should be different to whatever the speed test has got at that time, then you can just edit it down here. But most of the time, that's gonna be pretty accurate. All right, so now we'll go through the setup. Some of the stages of the setup are a little bit slow and I will just skip over them because otherwise we'll be sat here waiting for updates, etc. Right, so update. Okay, so now we've got into updates. So updates, take a while okay so my advice is do not do anything before you've completed all the updates don't try and adopt any devices you can see that just behind me here that they've popped up if i just move myself you can see that there's already devices popped up here at this stage i do not recommend adding them wait until the console is updated you will almost certainly have another few updates after this maybe two maybe three updates do all of those before you start adding devices, especially if you've got newer devices, because sometimes the firmware is older than the device, so it might struggle to find it or to set it up properly. So that's my recommendation. As I said, I'm not gonna sit here with you while we wait for this whole update, so I'll skip forward and we'll go to the next bit. 
Okay, so we've finally done all the updates. We've done five OS updates and one network update, and we're good to go. So this is the uh, console itself. This is where all the applications are held, and this is where you come into when you come in on the IP address of 192.168.1.1. So I'm not going to go through all these other applications or too much on this side. We're going to get straight into the network. So you can access the network either just by clicking on network here or by clicking on network up here. So if I just click on this one and that will take us straight into the network. So this is our kind of dashboard. This is where we get all our information. But we're not too interested in this at the moment because we haven't got much going on. So the first thing to do is go down, third one down to Unify Devices, click on that. And you'll see all the devices that we've plugged into that switch that then goes into the um, UDM. And we can adopt all of these. If you're in the console settings and you see them pop up to adopt devices, you can also do that. I just missed that opportunity. So we'll just quickly click on all these. And then when we're waiting for that to get ready, I'm just gonna go down to settings and we'll start setting up the network. So click on the cog at the bottom here, and then we can go to Wi-Fi. So first of all, we're just gonna do like a basic setup of a Wi-Fi. So if we just click on here and just say, uh, YouTube Wi-Fi, um, and we'll just give that a password of password one, two, three. And then what we need to do is we need to tell it which devices we want this Wi-Fi to work on. So if this is going to be like for your home, you're just going to select all these devices. Um, obviously, we don't know which one's which at the moment because we haven't named them. We can do that in a bit. Um, and that is pretty much it. That's all you need to do for like a standard Wi-Fi. You just click Add Wi-Fi Network at the bottom. However, if you want to do something a little bit more advanced, then you can click from Auto onto Manual here. And then you just scroll down and then there's a few options here which are quite useful. So these days, most of the time, SSIDs and Wi-Fi's are mixed frequency, which means they use both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. But some uh, sometimes people like to split them. So for example, you might have a YouTube 2.4 and then you just untick the 5. And then if you want to do a 5 gigahertz one, you do a YouTube a Wi-Fi 5 and then just untick the 2.4. So that's the way to um, split up the channels there if you don't want to have like a dual uh, frequency um, SSID. So band steering is basically a really useful feature that basically makes your devices prefer to use 5 gigahertz. I would just leave that on. The only time I wouldn't have that on is maybe if you're getting problems with 2.4 devices, but normally it's better just to create their own dedicated uh, 2.4 um, SSID for those devices if they are having problems. You can pretty much leave everything else down here. The only other thing I like to put on is fast roaming, and that just basically means that clients will move more smoothly between access points. So uh, it's a nice little feature. It does sometimes cause problems with devices, but most of the time it's a pretty good uh, good thing to have on. So we'll just click Add Wi-Fi Network there, and then that is all set up. What you'll see now is that all the access points have gone orange, and that means because they're applying that Wi-Fi network to those access points. And if you look on like your phone or whatever else you're using for the Wi-Fi, you should see that Wi-Fi network appear pretty quickly. Okay, so now let's get onto the guest network. So if we go down to settings, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna create a separate network for the guest. So we're gonna click on network here, and you can see at the moment we've got a default and that's what we're gonna be using for most of our um, sort of standard devices in the house. And that Wi-Fi that we just created is associated to this default, uh, this default network. But now if we wanna keep our guests separate, we're gonna create a new virtual network. And we're just going to say guest. Uh, obviously, it's going to go through that uh, YouTube. Now, this auto scale here, basically, what that means is that you can um, you can change the um, subnet. So I'm going to keep that on a two, but you might want to change that to whatever, say a 200 or 100, whatever you want to change it to. You can do that here, and also you can like reduce the number of IP addresses or even increase them if you want to. Okay, and that tells you which what IP addresses are in use. So we've got from 2.6 to, uh, to, uh, to 2.254. And then again, this is a bit like the Wi-Fi. If you want to just keep it in auto, you can. But if you want to go to manual, you can do that as well. So we're going to do that for the guests because we want to make some changes here. So the VLAN ID, I normally make the same as the subnet. So where that's a dot two up here, I just make that a dot two as well, or sorry, two as well. If you're going to make that like a 200, then obviously just change that maybe to a 200. It just keeps things a little bit neater. 
Okay, the next thing we're gonna do, because this is a guest network, we wanna isolate it. So basically what that means, as you can see here, is that the network is going to um, be separate from the other networks on the router. So for example, you wouldn't be able to pass traffic from the default network to the get, sorry, from the guest network to the default network, and that means it's more secure. So we're gonna click that. If you're using a guest network for like kids or maybe for like work stuff, then you can just click some of these. These are a bit content filtering here. It just bans certain things that people don't want you to see. For example, YouTube is set to safe mode and other features like that, which is really useful. Um, that's all we're gonna do for our guest network. We basically wanna make sure that this one here is isolated. Okay, so now we're gonna click add. Now we've created the guest VLAN, what we want to do is we want to create a guest Wi-Fi. So we'll go back up here and we're going to select Wi-Fi and we're going to create new. And we're going to call this guest Wi-Fi and we're going to have the password 123 again. And then here where it says network, we don't want it on the default, we want to put that onto a guest. So now that is on the guest VLAN, VLAN ID 2. Right, so we go down here and we're going to select all these. Um, and again, because we've got, uh, we want to make some uh, changes to this, we're going to go from auto, we're going to go to manual. Now this time, what we also want to do, as well as have the network isolated, we also want to isolate the clients. So this client device isolation thing here, basically we tick that. And what that means is, if you just read there, basically what that means is that devices that are connected to that access point won't be able to see each other. So if you're using something like a network scanning tool, you wouldn't be able to see that other devices connected to that access point. It's just a more secure way of doing it and it's perfect for guest networks. And that's pretty much all we're gonna do. We might also just tick the fast roaming just to improve their experience. Um, also, you can limit the Wi-Fi speed if you want to. Um, it depends how much bandwidth you've got, but you might when your guests have a little bit less bandwidth than, your, uh, than the rest of the network. Okay, so let's just click add Wi-Fi network. Okay, so now you can see we've got our guest Wi-Fi and it's associated to the guest network. Um, if you do want to change any of these, you can obviously create a new one if you want to create another, um, like we talked about for the 2.4 and the 5, for example. Also, if you want to change them or delete them, you should just click manage here and then tick the ones you want to change. Okay, so we're just gonna say done on that. Right, so now you've created your guest network and your guest Wi-Fi associated to that network. What you might wanna do is you might wanna have like a cable connection for your guests. So say for example, you know that um, your, your uh, guests are gonna be connected to your USW48 port switch um, and you know which port it's gonna be, then you can apply restrictions to that specific port so they're only able to get onto the guest network. So you can do that in a couple of ways. Either you can click on the devices I just did there and go to port manager like this, and then we can do the change here, or I'll just show you the other way. The other thing is this new little uh, feature down here, which is kind of just below uh, clients, which is called port. And that effectively is exactly the same thing. It just takes you into your port list, but it's for all your switches. Um, so let's say, for example, we know that our guest is gonna be connected to um, port one. We can go to port one, Maybe we can rename this, for example, we might wanna just call this guest. Um, we're gonna keep it active. And then what we're gonna do is rather than have it on the default uh, VLAN, we're gonna change that to the guest network. And we're gonna make sure that that means now that anything that any device that comes through there and uh, connects the cable to it is now gonna be on that guest network. They won't be able to get onto the default network. And the reason is, is because we've applied that VLAN as a default VLAN to that port. And because in the networks, we made that guest network isolated. So it means that they're not able to get across to the main network. Okay, so that's pretty much it. I'm just gonna show you one more thing, and that is how to name your devices. So if you're wondering about how to do this, you just literally go to devices, click on um, the device you wanna name and then you can go to settings and then you can just change the name here and then at the bottom, you can just apply that change. Sorry, let me just do that. So if I put this in here, if I just say like this is a guest, guest uh, AP and then you can just apply the changes down here and then that will rename it and you'll see it pop up here that it's got a new name of guest AP. And then when you're going to your Wi-Fi, for example, you might go to Wi-Fi here and rather than have it on all the access points, you might just want to put it on that guest AP and then that's only going to appear there. 
Okay, so I think that's about it. Oh, if you're not sure which uh, access point it is, you can locate it. I actually find it easier to do it on the, uh, here, down the bottom here. You can press locate, and basically that will make the access point lights start flashing, the LEDs and them will start flashing, and then you'll know that you've applied it to the right one. Okay, so that's it for me. I just wanted to show you this really simple setup of how to get your unified network up and running. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Please do subscribe and don't forget to check us out on Instagram. We will show this uh, setup on our account. So look out for that. Thanks for watching. Bye.